such a big uh, services to product business, right? One of the one of the greatest stories where they created an SEO product company after running, you know, ten years as a services company or something. Right? So there are so many of these examples. There are interviews. There are people like Nick Sergi and others who have uh, interviewed everybody, a lot of these people. Right? So if you are looking at um, you know a particular problem, saying that hey you know here's a problem, here's where I am, and here's where somebody else is, then I think number one, reading and absorbing everything there is out there about that, and then reaching out to people who can help you, because there are a lot of people who will help you. They will answer you know not ten but at least two questions. And I think not not enough of that. All of those three are happening. That not knowing the difference, not reading enough, and not reaching out enough. So I think if we do all of that, it's going to help a lot. Um, you have you know sold things all over the world. You know both with Thronware and uh, later better as well. Um, those of us here who are trying to build their ventures for the global audience, right? Um, what should they do? Are there any tips that you can share and maybe experiences um, how people can and should prepare themselves for a global market? And many people will be, and in Pune as well, are, are in that, 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 that stage or, or that situa right. situation. So, right, right. Um, so I think I have sort of a upside down perspective, right? Because I was selling there, but I had a company here, and then we were sort of an Indian company, sort of not. Um, but I think one of the things that I have um, uh, I have come to realize is that um, there are a lot of good things about Indian tech companies, but there is also because of the quality of work, because of the associated or oh, cheap labor kind of a tag um, that has been broadly thought of and because of some bad companies who just haven't done their job correctly, there is a lot of fear, there is a lot of uh, suspicion in working with Indian companies. Right? Um, I'll give you an example of Ready Contacts. So Ready Contacts is a marketing data space, a very fragmented space, there are a lot of different kinds of people. There are a lot of kind of uh, scammy companies, list brokers in the US as well, and there are a lot of uh, call centers in India and Philippines and Romania who will promise you the sun in terms of the data, and they just can't deliver, and there are a lot of bad experiences. So three out of five customers I talk to, and these are VPs of marketing, they're very smart, they've built data, they've run companies. Um, so, so when they are calling, right, um, their, their first they're calling with a lot of suspicion because you're part of the noise, right? So I think as an Indian company, I think we have to understand that there is a lot of noise, that and there is a lot, and you have to say that no, we are different, and how we are different, right? And I think what has helped us personally is um, I think um, at least in the West, um, what your website looks like and it says makes a huge difference in somebody perceiving you right from the get-go, right? So if you look at, let's say, a salesforce.com website or a Marketo website, uh, and if you are not matching up, right? And if you're far different, colors, fonts, design, language, everything, I think that's before that person even interacts with you, they're going to have kind of a, you know, uh, disposition that, oh, Indian company, We'll see kind of a thing, right? Um, so I think uh, that's a very easy problem to solve because again, once you recognize, you know the examples, you say, okay, here's what we got to do. There are a lot of companies who are doing it. I think you know, Fresh Desk and all these companies have been tremendously well from that perspective. So, um, so I think that's one thing that I would do. The second thing is, I think um, you just want to project yourself as global and not Indian as such. That doesn't mean that you are not um, you are putting on an accent or you are not proud of being Indian or something like that. But since there is that noise which you cannot kind of completely disregard, you you basically have to say, well, you know, and a lot of uh, lot of our customers ask us that question, and we say, well, you know, we are a California company with an operations based in Pune. Say that confidently. Have, be be very suave and confident yourself in your selling. And then depending on what your business is, I think you have to kind of break the next level of suspicion or fear in terms of the buyer 
by doing whatever it is that you can do. In, 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 in the case of ready contacts, we basically do free trials for our customers. And, um, and, and that whole thing, the, the website, the free trials and everything, SEO especially, has worked so well that we don't do, we, we haven't done any outbound selling for the last four years. Right? 100% of our business is inbound. So I think um, uh, if we can do it, anybody can do it. It's just, uh, uh, it, it just, you know, you have to realize that there is some negative noise around an Indian tech ID company. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we have to realize that we have to say, well, we are not those, and hopefully that noise is going away, and you 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 do whatever few things you can do to kind of kind of build that one. A uh, couple more questions, and then I would like to open it up to people. Um, uh, funding. You have raised funding for your startups, and you know you also mentioned the seventy million. Uh, dollar figure. So, um, how you know any thoughts on that? How should entrepreneurs prepare themselves for it? You know when to go for it. You know uh, any pointers? So I think Rongar honestly was very long ago, and the last ten years have completely changed the landscape. I think uh, late to late nineties, early two thousand, you would raise money with a PowerPoint presentation. Right now, you can't raise money with paying customers. Right. So I think um, my my more recent um, knowledge of this space has been through friends who try to raise money and uh, just being close to the whole system in general. And I think um, one simple thing that 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 um, that repeats again and again is that um, build traction for your product or your company because traction trumps everything. It doesn't matter you know how cool your IP is, what is happening. If you say that, hey, here's the product we've built, here's the traction we've gotten, customers, paying customers, testimonials, and all those things, depending on, upon whether you're trying to raise seed money or um, later, uh, later rounds, it's all about traction, it's all about metrics, it's all about saying that here are our numbers for the last six months, right? It's all about saying that, okay, here, and as, as, as a business, I think you have to focus on one or two metrics that you can sustainably show that you're continuously growing. Right? So I think that's one thing. The other thing that I have specifically observed meeting with a handful of startups here in my limited time is that it looks like a lot of um, companies have raised too little money. So it's almost like if you look at their cap table, it looks like they raised a little money, you just seed one, then they raised a little more, that's seed two, then they just raised a little more, that's seed three, and at the end of it, you know, the cap table looks so complex that you have no idea how will they ever raise a series A. Right? So I think uh, don't raise too less, don't raise too early and, um, and, and, and I think focus on the traction and the metrics so that you can always um, uh, be in a position where the business, so if the market is good and you have traction then it is more in your, I mean the, 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 you, you have the advantage of not being questioned how this will happen or that will happen, right? Because the theoretical question and the reality of today is that um, those those companies don't stand a chance because there are ten others who are already answering those questions, right? So I think the stage where we are in, you have to show a working business to actually start raising them. Um, last one, so just forty years, done a lot of things. 10 years better, where do you go from here? What are the plans? So I think I, I, I honestly don't have any long term plans uh, in general. I, I take every three years at a stretch. We actually just made a big move from US to India after living 16 years out there. Most of our friends thought we were out of our minds. But uh, so I think we are here right now. And uh, as far as business is concerned, I think uh, we have a very um, interesting model that we love. So I think we could have just do more and more of it. Um, going back to your uh, specific um, uh, point about how do you find founders and build this thing, I think we definitely want to do more um, very early stage investments to kind of help somebody else get out of the uh, ground floor kind of a thing and um, kind of keep doing what we do. Very good. Uh, friends, that is why for you uh, and its story. Before I open it 
uh, to everybody for question and answer. You know, he mentioned the meal time.